Now anyone who thinks that I'm gonna build this motor and sell it to some sucker on the internet, no, no, no. I'm putting it in my girlfriend's car. Come on, that's what you do with those motors. Uh, Dan here, TD Speed Shop. Before we get into this video, I need to say real clear, nothing in this video is a explanation or to be taken seriously. This is just for fun and me screwing around the garage. So enjoy the comments. Um, so a couple days ago, put the video out with that junk uh, small block. And obviously we had water in one for sure, maybe a couple cylinders. And I think a few people missed the point of that video. And uh, and honestly, I think, you know, we'll, we'll do a little more. So I got that small block Chevy for free as part of a deal with a kit car I bought from an auction. So that came with something, never looked at it, didn't go there, didn't spin it over, didn't do any of those things. And uh, that's that. But honestly, it was free. So, I mean... You take it when it's free. There's a few parts on it. So anyways, uh, I'll shoot around with a little bit. Everyone's like, you put an LS in Danny's car, these other things. I hear you. I've got a, two cars with LSs in them. I find them soulless. They work great. They make power. They make noise. They do all those things. But uh, small block Chevy is just where my heart's at right now. And for you know, a little cruiser, it just looks cool. I think it looks period correct. Not that that matters to anybody other than you, uh, myself, but there you go. Now, this motor, well, I might as well show you here. Um, I was messing around, like I said, clearing snow. And I came in, and I, well, I pulled the engine stand out of the bank. And I was going to uh, take the torque converter off, hang it on that thing. I was going to completely disassemble this thing. You know, it's uh, steal all the parts off it. Now, again, is it rebuildable? Absolutely. Is there a bunch of good parts in it? Absolutely. It's not garbage. I say garbage or junk, but what I mean is just not worth my time or money by the time you rebuild a small block chevy and do all that scooting around who's going to build it stock not me and now you're into performance stuff it adds up yada 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 and i just don't need a performance motor right now i need something bone stock that i can put in danny's car so she can tool around town and that's what i need currently i'm not throwing the garbage it's not actually going to the shredder it will be put in the corner until i need it but i uh i was going to lift it up with the crane and, and put it on the stand before you do that you have to take the cork burner off and uh, i was like you know what this is gonna be a hassle so i pounded on the piston a little bit as you can well see and then i put a big bar on the ring gear and i worked it back and forth and i got it to move so now it, it goes down in that piston or that hole i should say a piston goes down but as it comes up it hits a ridge so then i thought to myself we're gonna sloppy mechanics this thing, small block Chevy style. I'm not gonna pull the piston out. I'm gonna get my little uh, reamer. Well, maybe I'll pull the piston out, we'll see. I might just see what that piston looks like. We'll hone that one hole, see how it comes out. I, I didn't get too close into it, but when I said it's junk, if you have a little bit of rust in there, it's not too bad. When you start getting pitting, it has to be bored out. There's kind of no way around it. This cylinder head, same thing. People kept thinking, just put it back together, it's gonna be fine. Um, we'll pull the valves out, we'll see if we can lap them, see what they look like, clean this up with a wire wheel. We'll just do the one slug and see what happens. We'll put the heads back on with the existing gaskets. I think they're in decent shape. Um, I have another intake, I have a carburetor, known good stuff, slap those on there, bare bones, and uh, we'll see if we can make it run. And then we'll see if it smokes real bad, if that hole has any compression whatsoever. We can test that and uh, kind of put it to rest. And then side, do we take it all apart? Do we not? Is it going to be some junk motor? Junk motor? Or is it something we could use down the, down the road? This is something I'm sure they would have done years and years ago. I bought a 64 or 5 Beaumont. It had a six-cylinder in it. And I took the... I took the head off i don't know what i did there but one piston was 30 over and five were stock and i'm sure that was done many years ago when labor was cheap in the machine shop and stuff like that and that was like the absolute cheapest way to get the thing rolling again and i always laughed at that and i always kind of wanted to do that myself so maybe we'll do something ridiculous like that or we'll just hone it out see what the rings look like and uh, we can slap this jalopy back together just to appease the internet. I'm here for you guys. And anybody who said I bought this thing, left it outside in the snow and the rain and all that, 
This time you're wrong, I didn't, but usually that is something I would do. So I don't know how much we get done tonight, but uh, that's the plan for this video. It's already like 10 o'clock at night and I just finished plowing snow, I'm tired and cold, but uh, yeah. Let's make the internet happy. So I got the engine crane thinking I was gonna lift this thing up and pull the pan and you know and, and slide the cylinder or the piston out and I was like <laughs> nah this doesn't deserve any of that so I rolled the motor over I got the torque converter off I rolled the motor down uh, so the piston was as far down the hole as it's gonna go I vacuumed out you see it really is that is not good which is unfortunate because I mean up here you can't catch a nail so this thing's actually not in too bad shape you know, it's glazed and whatnot, but uh, what we're going to do, cordless drill, not what you want, and MERS uh, stone and Uncle Tony gas bottle. We're going to go ahead and see if we can, what it's going to look like if we clean it up just a hair. And uh, we'll go from there and see how bad it's going to be. I mean, worst case, you'll burn oil and lose compression. But I mean, other than that, it's not like it's interference fit or anything. It's super important, right? So I just watched an Uncle Tony video where he, uh, he used one of these, but he had one uh, stone flipped upside down for added performance or something like that. I'm not really too sure what his deal is. Do this. Now, again, you're supposed to kind of have this thing turning as it goes in and out and, and whatnot, but we're just going to wing it. <laughs> oh man, talk about absolutely doing the wrong thing the wrong way. I friggin' love this. What if we can just hone it out to the point where we get like a, some oversized rings or something like that? I'm not gonna lie, it actually came out nicer than I thought it was going to. but it's still garbage. Oh, I spoke too soon. Man, that is pitted. Now again, you're supposed to be kind of going up and down all around, but man, this is actually coming out not bad. <laughs> Almost makes me feel like I should have taken the piston right out. I can still feel junk with my fingers. Well, you know, this is one of those things where I thought I was going to look like an idiot, but, uh, wow. Honestly, it's Mert looks like an idiot. You're the one that brought me into this world, Mert, and gave me the tools for crying out loud. I basically feel like we're DD machine shop at this point. Okay, well there's one definite divot which we're not getting out. But uh, otherwise I think we're mint. Uh, let's see if this thing will roll over here. Okay, so originally uh, this piston stopped on the way up because it was full of junk. And I kind of cleaned it out, it's still dead, we'll see. Gentle. Okay, well, it did something. Go all the way around. Well, we're home free. <laughs> home free, he says. Get some of this junk out. 
So right here, I can feel all that with my finger, which that's probably where the ring was and all the water got in there right between the piston and the wall and the, yeah, and the cylinder wall. The rest is definitely not fantastic. And uh, you know what I'll probably do now? Cause we want to make sure this is good. So I was holding the drill, honing it, not moving up and down uh, very much. You really want to go up and down, up and down. Watch someone else's video for the love of God if you're going to be doing this. And uh, that's how you want your, your cross hatch. So I'll just go ahead and touch that up real quick with some in and outs. And uh, we'll move on to the cylinder head and machine that on the bench. So fast forward a little bit here. We basically hot tank this thing uh, with the wire wheel. And I just clean the tops of the pistons. And these are 30 thou over. So this thing has been a part at some point in its life. The lifters, they all come in and out nice. They look okay to me. So put those right back in. I mean, I don't know. I pulled a few out that I could get to easy and they all came in and out fine. So we cleaned up the, the deck surface there. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and put this cylinder head right back without touching it because I don't want to do anything with the gasket. Put it back on and uh, let it sit there. And then we'll go sit up on the bench and see how home free we're gonna get with those things. If we'll be able to clean up that, uh, the valves. I don't know if I have any lapping compound here. I might as well get some of that tomorrow if anything's open. And uh, kind of keep on keeping on. <laughs> I can't wait for the comments on the internet. This is a video that other people are going to make videos about calling me an idiot because they don't get the joke. It's a joke, but we're going to make it run. Okay, so we got the cylinder head ready to go. Now we're only going to take out these valves here. Hopefully they come out nicely. Now, um, another tool of MERS. This is your valve spring remover. Uh, goes that way, yep. Yeah. Um, you know what I laugh about right now is, so my old man, who all these tools uh, belong to, who has since retired, so of course when you're tired, you give all your junk to your degenerate son, but I feel like he wants a big disclaimer that just says something along the lines of, he has no responsibility for this. I'm kind of doing this backwards to show you. Um, and he absolutely never did this himself, but you know what? This is kind of one of those, uh, you know, superhero that uses their powers for evil instead of good. That's what's happening right now, but I love it. Okay, so we crack that in. You got a magnet. You get your little keepers. I'm gonna give it a couple more turns. Ah. Gentle, gentle. Man, I'm still sick. It's a pain in the ass. Okay, so we got one out. Got the other out. Store those accordingly. There you go. Drop everything on the floor. Operating clean like usual. Keep all that stuff together. Spring off. Oh, it's got the good valve, uh, valve seals. Okay, it's got two. Those are gonna be junk for sure. Hopefully I have some seals in a little kit because these get hard and brittle and break in two just like that. Let's see what happens here. Now these can have a little edge. I feel okay. Let's see what happens. Oh, came through nice. Real easy. So that is not fantastic. Oh, oof. The head is bad, bad. But at this point, we're committed. We'll lap those together and see what we end up with. I'm going to take the other one out real quick and I'll show you this dumpster fire of what we're going to put back together. So based on what I'm seeing here, I'm thinking the exhaust valve was hanging open 
and let a bunch of junk in there because the intake valve is, I mean, it's not great, but whatever. And I mean, that's the intake valve. But the exhaust valve is the one that's all crunchy. So I'm going to go do a little Googling and see if there's a way to do like an at home valve job anyone recommends because obviously if you just get in there and start grinding all the rust out and you go all cattywampus it'll just leak like crazy as opposed to now when it'll leak like crazy but uh yeah this the the cylinder cleaned up way better than i thought it would so we'll see what we can do and uh, kind of go from there but i think that's it for tonight i gotta look so these are the little oh i cut oh i open up my super cut um valve stem seal so these just go and that one, I guess. And uh, so if it doesn't do that, it'll smoke. So we gotta get some of those, two of them. I don't I might have a kit somewhere. I'll have to check and uh, we'll kind of keep on keeping on, but I'm excited to <laughs> carry on with this. See you tomorrow. Okay, so it's a new day. I got a little lapping compound. Now, what we're gonna do, I got the camera all set up. The intake valve's not terrible, so you can see and that kind of flat edge that runs in this edge that's been kind of ground into the cylinder head so this one will clean up no problem the issue is the exhaust valve is they're thicker so there's more meat <clears throat> but they're a little she's a little rough and the cylinder head itself is really gross but i was watching this guy on the internet rebuilding a 454 he got a couple hundred bucks and he's doing it like as cheap as possible and wow, he did his own valve job just by lapping. So we'll see. Oh, this is a bit of a pain. Might as well lay it down. We're gonna see how clean we can get this. And then we'll lap it up. Don't crush the valve. Also, I found some small lock Chevy gaskets, but uh, no valve seals, story of my life. Huh. Not bad. This will clean up just fine. This thing's gonna be a good motor. Other than being completely oh I spoke too soon. If we're gonna be able to fix this that is that's pretty bad right there but we'll try and lap it anyways and see if we can get somewhat of a ring in there if we can we'll send it but i think the short blocks we get on this thing really it needs a valve job or a cylinder head or something like that so we'll see I think it's uh, enough to carry on with. This might be junk, but we'll see. So the valve actually cleaned up very nice. So that's fine. Now this is one of those, this is a customer vehicle. You would never, ever, 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 ever do this. But since this is just for funsies, we're going to go ahead and lap her up. So what we're going to do, put the valve in, we're going to put lapping compound around the edge that's going to touch the cylinder head. I'm gonna put a piece of hose on the back side of the valve, on the tulip side of it, I guess. And we're gonna attach that to the drill and do a little pulling. And it's gonna spin the valve with the lapping compound, which essentially lapping compound is like a, a gritty grease. And it's gonna cut and meet the valve to the cylinder head. <clears throat> and we got a lot of cutting to do. But uh, that video I was watching, like I said, he did it for like 20 minutes to the point where the valve was sunk into the head. And it was all fixed up. Dead wrong, but uh, we'll see what happens. So this here's our setup. We've got a drill with a tap in it, screwing into a piece of hose. That'll give us our little rotational. We have the end of the hose on the end of the valve with a hose clamp on it, which will allow in and out to get some goo on it. It's the valve compound. I think it says it's like 120, and then that breaks down to like 220 or 300 or something like that as you use it. So we'll be uh, starting this dopping a lot and see if we can uh, wear this thing in. I don't know, cars wanna run, let's see if this one does.
So it's cleaned up. Oh man, it's bad in a, in a bunch of spots. It really needs the guide cut or the. Uh, yeah. But this is what we have today. The idea is, I mean, it's obviously it's going to clean up right where the valve wants to sit. It's doing a good, the valve's fine. But the cylinder head needs to be cut for sure. But uh, I'll work at this for the next uh, six hours and see where we end up. So, a quick update. The valve here, we're working into it. Now what's happening, hard to see. It usually is like a flat edge. We're starting to have a bit of a step down, which is the same thing happened to that guy in that video I watched. Because what we're doing is we're pulling the valve further and further into the head, which is not really what you want. But what you want less than that is a mangled up uh, seat. And right in there, let me focus. It's all kind of gibbled, but we're working through. We had a couple of spots all the way around, which are now all fixed up. So at this point, we're gonna keep giving her. I mean, uh, yeah. What else can you do? With what we have available on a weekend where everything is closed, we should be able to have that sealed up. I don't know how much further I want to go, just until maybe, I don't know. Unfortunately, it's rust the whole way through. If it was just part of it, I'd just leave it. But well, we're gonna keep giving her, and uh, yeah, realizing it needs a proper valve job at some point in his life. Daniel, get that taken care of, I'm sure. It's all wrong. It's so wrong. I think it's gonna work. So we got the valve. Man, it's, ooh, she's goofy looking. Um, and then here, right, where my finger is, that's where the little mark was. I don't think I wanna go any further. I think we're at the point of no return, but we should be good enough. It's wrong, but it's the right kind of wrong. If you look at it, the valve goes in. It sits in further than the one right above it. But, uh, hey, so she goes, it's like just having one pounded valve. Now, let's be honest, you guys out there running your jalopies, one cylinder's not running as good as the rest anyways. We just know which one it's going to be in this. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to show you the correct way of lapping a valve on the intake side, because it really didn't need much. It could probably just be slammed back together, but we're this far apart. Um, if you're doing this, lapping compound is like sandpaper grease. Be very careful with it clean everything around it you don't want that going in there obviously when you're running the stem in and out keep that clean oiled and all that you don't want any of that grease in there it'll pound all sorts of stuff you don't want out so there we go um oh i'm excited for the comments already let's get this one dialed together and then we can uh i'm gonna pull the so i found a set of gaskets we're gonna pull the gasket off we'll clean all the chambers take all everything we'll, we'll, we'll basically rebuild the head with the uh, wire wheel and have this thing ready to go back together. Okay, so we're all dialed together, so we've got our valve. I cleaned it up real quick. The idea is we want this flat bit, not the very tip, but the flat bit, to be meshed with the cylinder head. So, we give it a little, little spray in there. So, I already wire wheeled everything. So that goes in nice and easy. We're gonna take our uh, hose, and we're going to put it on the part of the valve that is sticking out the back side and give her a quick hose clamp down. Very simple. This, like they sell a tool, which is basically a glorified suction cup. And you uh, suction cup the end of the valve and like you're starting to fire. But uh, well, that requires patience, which I just don't have. Okay, got that on there. So now, you want to just put a little bit of compound in there. Just to dabble do ya. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is turn the drill on, then use your finger to kinda of push it in. You're basically sanding the two pieces together. 
lapping. I always go on the slow side because I figure it's meant to be done by hand. So carry on. Now intake valves are a little thinner than exhaust valves. Just keep that in mind. But pretty simple. So we'll do this a little bit. Take it out after and it should be good enough. Now honestly, they probably didn't even need it. But it was in this uh, cylinder with a bunch of water in it. I mean, let's be honest, all these other ones are probably mangled too. And just uh, run the hell out of it with some RPM. We'll probably just fix everything. So I'll get this dialed together and we'll uh, start cleaning this head up. So there you can see where it's all kind of shiny. And then same thing on the valve. See, we're not right on the tip. That's where all the sealing is done. So that's just fine. They're ready to be reassembled. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull volt these valves out. I'm gonna brake clean the crap out of everything, this bottom one as well. We'll pull the cylinder, uh, the gasket off. We'll pull the gasket off here. We'll wire wheel everything. We'll get all this crud and whatnot out. And then this thing is basically a reman head for uh, zero dollars. Okay, I gotta show you one more wrong thing I'm doing here because well, we are on the we're on the wrong train. Um, so I didn't have any of the the seals for the valve stems, and uh, I didn't go look. But what I did have was a bunch of these little O rings. They only come in that little red Amazon box. So I put a couple of those on on the valves where they're supposed to be, and uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, worst case, it falls off and it uh, smokes, and it needs valve seals. So yeah, I got the exhaust one on with some of the intake on. We wire wheeled everything. Got it all nice and shined up, ready to go. Um, I'll pull that one off and I'll wire wheel it too. Now we've got head gaskets and I'm so confident in this thing, we might as well you know, break out the red carpet. Okay, so the other cylinder head's all kind of cleaned up, hosed down with brake clean. We got the reman head on already. We got the brand new head gasket sitting on there. So yeah, these things are, you know, all dried off from the brake clean and we're, uh, Ready to slap this bad boy on there, and then head bolts, and I mean really, short list, this thing will be running in a couple hours, an hour. So we've got one cylinder head on and the head bolts in now. Small block Chevys are very simple. So you're gonna have three different size head bolts. The shorter ones go on the kind of outside of the exhaust. You have your long ones which go on the center, and then there's two shorties that go on the edge. Now. These you gotta, I ran these, a little bit of brake clean on them. A little thread sealer in them. And uh, I'll put all these in. And I'll show you how we're gonna torque them real quick after. When it comes to torquing, you want to start in the center and work your way out. There is an actual torque uh, diagram. We're not going to use it. And uh, I'm just going to snug it with the impact. We got the torque crunch out. So basically it's inside out. Make sure the cylinder head lays flat. You're done. Okay, so I will Google whatever the torque spec is. We'll run inside out, and then uh, we'll clean up in here just one last little time. Put in the push rods. Yeah, kind of keep going. Pretty, pretty simple. All right, moment of truth. So we're going to set the valves real quick here. Of course, the way I do it, everybody hates, which makes me love it. Um, snug everything down. I'm gonna roll the motor over a quarter turn at a time and see which valves need to be tightened up. And then the real big moment of truth will be seeing if this thing spins. So 
Enjoy that time lapse. Okay, so we got a real scientific test going on here. We have the everything hooked up, so it should roll over. Now we'll go ahead and see if we can hear the pop. So that one had, that was the one that screwed up. That one has, I would say this one has less. Ah, you know what? We'll spray a little oil in there. The rings are probably not happy in this one. So it has compression. I assume the other side's fine. Why even look? So now intake on. We got just a little bit more cleanup to do here. It kind of lazed out. And uh, intake distributor. We're just going to run a carburetor on it for now. Put some oil in it and uh, hot water the old girl. Hopefully the fuel pump works. I guess we can test that too. See? Do you have any uh, pressure? Yeah, it feels like it's doing nothing. Oh, it's loose. That's probably what the oil leak was from. Uh, everything was loose in this damn car. Gasket's on. We just put a boatload of silicone on the china wall front and back. I don't even know where I got this intake from. At one point, people were sending me intake manifolds, so this one you sent me, I appreciate it. And plop her straight down. Perfect. I'll go bolt that thing on. We'll put on valve covers. That's just the stalkers. And then, uh, yeah, top dead center, distributor in. See if this thing will fire off. Look at that, carburetor on. So, this is just summit job you had. It works good though, I can't complain. So, I've rolled it over. So, we're on number one, uh, top dead center. So, that's good. We're about eight degrees advanced. Now, what we're going to do, I took this distributor because the first one I found. And I marked where I want number one to be. Now, if you notice the oil pump drive, it matches in line with the rotor. And then, everyone else gives you attitude. I've never done this before, but I adjusted where the slot is for the fuel pump. So we'll see if that'll mesh nicely. Gentle, gentle. Let's go down here. There we go. Nope. Oh, would you look at that? So, we're basically right at number one. We should have all kinds of adjustment, which is sweet. So, in theory, when my mark is lined up with the rotor exactly where it is, just like that, we should be at eight degrees advanced of initial timing. So I'm gonna lock that down, put the cap on, and uh, wow. Oh, we gotta put spark plugs in. We might clean them up first, but maybe I have a set. No, we don't wanna break the budget. Okay, so we got this thing all together. Uh, I'm gonna toss in some of this zinc out of it, even though apparently it does nothing. A bunch of people in there are saying it has to be cooked in with the oil or something like that, but you know what? We're not buying racing oil for this race motor just yet. So there we go. Um, spark plugs are in, I cleaned them up. Organized. Uh, it had six of the same and two difference. Now, everyone keeps asking why we're not doing LS in this thing. <laughs> we'll tell you right now. Dramatic pause. Yeah, I bought these. Ugh. Fender Well Tri-5 Chevy headers and uh, since this is basically my car, I mean Danny's car, uh, I think this is what she wanted on them. So uh, 
let's bolt these things on real quick and then run the plug wires and uh she's a runner well she's a spinner we'll see if she's a runner headers on i just have uh i just ran two bolts one front one back no gaskets had to go and get some gasoline so we'll fill the bowl holes uh real quick here i'm hoping those fire off i think the starter's a little on the weak-ish side so we're going to use to fire it off uh Murr building this little thing it's got two switches on it one's to trigger the starter and one triggers the Excellent pump. One puts 12 volts to the coil. How confident are we? Contact. Need a block of water or something under there. It's a little better than that, maybe. Yeah. Be fine. So it runs. <coughs> I guess we could uh, call together a fuel system real quick. See if that fuel pump is working. Didn't seem like it was making any uh, horrible noises. Hard to tell. I hate really ripping it without uh, any mufflers on it, but hey. Fixed! Let's get a hose to the jerry can. Okay, I filled both bowls. Should go now. And hopefully idle a little bit. Might be a little extra fuel. All the pipes got hot. Whoo! Let's let it. Ugh, it's foggy in here. There you go. I'm calling it a win. A win. She got hot. All uh, all eight pipes had heat in them, so that's good. Uh, obviously, need a bit of a tune-up. You know, put some plugs in it. We're gonna clean it. We're gonna paint it. That'll be the upcoming video. So I'm thinking. Well, there's a lot. It's gonna happen uh, right now for you guys. Service truck gets some work. We go get Danny's car, we screw around with it, and then probably three, four videos from now, we're gonna paint this thing. It's gonna be going in that hot rod. Now, again, if you made it this far, understand this is not the right way of doing it, but this was the zero dollar way of doing it. Oh, it seems to be leaking oil. Guess we'll address that some other time. But uh, for now, 
she's together it runs if i had a motor that started this good um and i didn't know what i had done to it already i'd slap it in the car and carry on now anyone who thinks that i'm gonna build this motor and sell it to some sucker on the internet no 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 i'm putting it in my girlfriend's car come on that's what you do with those motors thanks for watching subscribe below leave a comment if you're a machinist i'm terribly sorry